next session, uh, which is about small language Wikipedias and how they can take their next steps. So I am going to reintroduce Sarah, uh, who you are now familiar with, um, and uh, Sadiq Shadahu, um, who amongst many positions is serving as reg regional ambassador for indigenous communities at Art and Feminism and is the co-founder of the Dagbani Wikimedians user group. Uh, so they will be members for our second panel debate. Hello everyone and moderated by Tanvir Hassan. So, oh, over to you folks. Hello again. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I, sorry. Sorry, I had some problem with my audio. Um, do you hear me well? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. Very good. So, um, unfortunately, I had to step in for Tanwer Hassan. He has not. Uh, um, show up yet. <laughs> so if he shows up, I will give the screen to him. But um, until then, um, it's very nice to um, see you both. Um, Sarah, thank you so much for your very nice speech. Um, it is so interesting. And to me, what it really uh, hit me a lot was uh, when you said um, no one puts that much effort into being a troll. I think it's so important to lift that. I mean, that we are not judging that one person. Um, um, yeah, as you say, he was just a child. So it's the community that has to come together and it's the community that we want to talk about today. Um, so I'm very happy that Sadiq uh, could step in. Um, I have previously met you in some art and feminism uh, meetings um, yeah. and it, what you're doing with the Dagbani Wikipedia is impressive. I think everyone has uh, noticed, have seen the tweets and the picture of um, how many Dagbani speakers we have here today. <laughs> so uh, um, yeah, and uh, uh, what is uh, very interesting is that Dagbani's uh, Wikipedia is not yet live, it's in the incubator. Yeah. So, <laughs> would you like to tell us something? Like, what what have you done to be able to create that much enthusiasm already in the incubator? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, greetings from Tamale, um, the northern part of Ghana, where I'm currently based. Uh, actually, that is where the community is. I live in Accra, uh, but because of the community, I have to relocate to northern region. Family where I have 90% of Dagbani speakers and uh, volunteers and Dagbani Wikipedia contributors. Yes, so it is true that uh, we've been working so hard. Um, I think um, over the last um, few months, we've done a lot with regards to like improving the quant uh, quality of articles on the Dagbani Wikipedia incubator. Um, we, uh, we were able to do this through um, series of um, activities like editor tones and contests and um, we did a couple of photo walks and we created um, articles alongside those uh, photo walks so um, what has really worked for us is um, i think one of the things i always tell the community is that um, you know wikipedia is there for us we are all uh, volunteers i have been volunteering for quite some time now i used to edit the English Wikipedia a lot and, you know, Wikimedia Commons. But I always tell them that, you know, Dagbani is our own and Wikipedia is the platform. So if we have a platform that would help us, you know, improve uh, uh, the visibility of Dagbani on the internet, why not? So they seem to be very excited about that. I think it started um, when I made a comment on Facebook uh, some of the Dagbani groups about like establishing a, a, a stronger um, community after we were laid dormant for some time. And the reaction was amazing. I had like over 500 reactions from one of the, um, you know, Dagbani Wikipedia, um, you know, Facebook groups. I just asked them, what if they know that there's a Wikipedia in Dagbani that all of them can be part of? And they were like, oh, really? 
So most of them didn't know, but while they get to know, they were like inboxing me, you know, asking of my contact and trying to be part of the community. So that was really exciting. So that was where I started mobilizing the community together with Mohammed Sadat, who has been a strong pillar of this community. He actually started before me and um, due to his current engagement with the Wikimedia Germany as uh, a community communications manager for Wikidata and Wikibase. Um, he has been at the background supporting me. So that was how we started. And one thing that really worked for us again is like bringing students on board. Um, we tried to contact uh, educational institutions like the tutorial colleges where Dabana is being taught. We also visited myself and Sadat in 2017. We visited the University of Education, Wiliba, the School of Languages Department, where we interacted with um, Dagbani teachers and students. Some of them are doing BA in Dagbani, some are doing um, M-field in Dagbani. So we discussed and um, you know, we asked if they would be able to support us build this incubator. They were excited and we mobilized them together. We created a WhatsApp group and Telegram group. That was how we started. So what really worked for us is bringing students and teachers on board. These are people who learn the language in the institution and they are always willing to like improve the way they learn and how they can also support in building the Dagbani language in, on the internet, not just Wikipedia. So that was how we started. Thank you. It's so inspiring. I, this reminds me too when uh, Sarah Thomas was mentioning about the Scots Wiki being, or no, the Scots language being um, intelligible, but maybe not considered intelligent. While here, it seems like the Dagbani speakers really have a, a strong pride in their language. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Yeah. So yeah, I think Dagbani, with the Dagbani language too, is also a family group of around 16 languages is also mutually intelligible uh, if you check we have um, some of the one uh, like it's a good language and the major um, the four major uh, sub dialects are the dagbani itself and then the nanumba and then the mampusi so we have the moli dagbani so the moli dagbani is a family of languages some of them are in Burkina Faso, and we have some people who speak Moli Dagban languages in Benin. We have at least two, the notary language in Benin. We have the, even within the Dagbani um, languages, the Moli Dagban, the core languages in Tamil, uh, in Ghana, we still have sub dialect. We have those who speak the Nayahli, the Tumusli. So it's a whole lot of like, you know, yeah and and these languages well, like, can be on the same wikipedia or you have to have different for each of them so um the for the current one that we are working on now is one that serves to uh, three languages okay and that is the, the dagbani language we have the mampusi and then the nanumbers can read and understand everything that we do on the dagbani incubator right now it's just uh, some little um, differences that we have, but everything looks just almost the same. But the other languages uh, outside the three other 16 languages, which are spoken in um, other part of the, uh, the region like Benin and Burkina Faso, the Mosi language actually is also a, a family language, but I can hardly understand it if I don't pay much attention to it. So it's not so close to the three that we have currently in the incubator. Yeah. So, yeah, it is true that these people like they have pride in speaking the language and they are very excited to support the language. That I think has been the strong um, motivation. People want to see their languages on the internet, and sometimes it depends on how we carry the information. I ha I started um, working with the community in Accra when we were doing the um, Tree Wikipedia, which is not my dialect. One thing I realized was that they also have similar thing that we have. They also have sub um, smaller languages or dialects, but bringing them together is the problem. Like how to bring the community together is always the problem. But with the Dagban community, I think it is slightly different because they embraced the, um, the idea and they accepted that it is their uh, responsibility to actually improve or work on the incubator. So that was how we started. We started by running contests 
contest, we started uh, My Northern Achiever. Uh, there's a TV program in Tamale called My Northern Achiever, where every um, weekend on Saturday, uh, a personality from the northern region, mostly speakers of the, Dagban, the Moli Dagban language, are invited to uh, you know share their uh, life experience, their achievements. So these are notable people that are from the northern region and speaks one of these, at least one of these languages. But they are not notable on the internet. We know them, we know their names. When you mention their name in northern region, everybody knows them. But when you go onto the internet, you don't find any information about them. So we saw that it was just an opportunity as contributors. We are always looking for ways to start projects. So to begin, we created my Northern Achiever contest where we created articles for these people. I think they were like 43 people, individuals. We created Wikidata items and Wikipedia articles for them in English and then the Dagban. So we did the three uh, Wiki projects within the first month. And then we moved to um, Wikilabs folklore where we there are a lot of things in the Northern region in terms of photography, like pictures that we can use for a lot of Wikipedia articles that relates to Northern region and even um, the entire country in general. But because Wikipedia activities are not mostly uh, done here, we don't get these things um, onto Wikimedia projects. So we decided to embark on Wikilabs folklore. We were happy to be part of the 2021 folklore um, campaign and we Uploaded, we uploaded over 1,000 um, plus pictures which supported us in creating articles and also adding them to um, existing English and the Grand Wikipedia articles. Then we saw that we could also do something with language pronunciations, uh, words pronunciations in Dagbani. Then uh, my colleague Sadat again came out with an idea that we could actually use um, a tool to record um, words pronunciation, like unique words we have uh, standard Dagban ways that we can uh, record and upload them to Wikimedia Commons. And that was another huge project we embarked on for a month. And we ended up uploading over 4,000 uh, plus audio recordings of unique Dagban ways, which uh, the idea for that was to um, build a future digital dictionary and also support Wiktionary. And then uh, we also envision that uh, tools builders can use it to design um, games and, and tutorials or learning materials for Dagbani, the group, um, the Dagbani language group. Yeah, so those are some of the things that we did. And still we are, we are still doing it. Yeah, it is uh, so inspiring. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's interesting because everyone I, uh, I mention your name too it seems like everyone knows you Sadiq uh, because of this um, your work has been noticed all over which is fantastic um, now I'm very happy that uh, the original moderator is, is back in show Tanmer very welcome um, I will leave the stage to you <laughs> thank you oh, apologies uh, I'm really sorry I mixed up the time in my head. Uh, Mali, thank you so much for filling in. Sarah, always a pleasure to meet you. Sadiq, again, <laughs> nice to connect. <laughs> yeah. uh, I understand that there has been a little bit of a conversation, so I don't want to interrupt the conversation at all, but I was hoping that we can talk a, a little more specifically about the challenges that a small Wikipedia and a Wikimedia project have in comparison for an established one at the policy level and also probably at the community level. Can Sara give us an example, share some insights, and then hand it over to Sadiq? For, for particular challenges that smaller wikis face. Yeah. yeah. I think, in policies, um, in the way that yeah. you work with community. Pol policy development. One of the real challenges that we found for, for Scots, particularly over the last year, um, aside from everything we talked about, about having a small community um, is and, and therefore having fewer people to be able to take on on the work, so things like just dealing with trolls, dealing with uh, vandalism, um, those some of the tools that exist that you would expect in English Wikipedia if you're used to being on English Wikipedia just don't exist, um, and that that can mean that there's um, an increased workload on admins, um, and if you have a small community and a smaller pool of admins, you're at real risk of burnout for those people. Um, so things like I think succession planning and and being able to encourage more people in. Um, is 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 really a big challenge. Um, one one of the problems that I think we had uh, over the last year 
was people coming from English Wikipedia expect or, or speaking in English expecting things to be the same and then finding like oh this isn't the same or the policies are slightly different um so one of our ed editors had been like writing a new um our admin sorry been writing a new notability policy for Scots um and just that a bit of culture clash of coming in and finding because we have so many people that existing editors come in go oh that's that's different or oh that's not right um but yeah I think dealing with uh, dealing with um people coming in and and trolls and vandalism has been has definitely been a challenge for the volume of work that it is um and just yes I think the the volume of work that there is and the volume of work um for the size of the community um can be can be a real challenge I think it's a it's a bit of a it comes up all of the time um whenever we talk to people it's like yeah we would we'd like to see we'd like to see more editors I think burnout is is a real thing um and I think for me that's that's one of the big challenges that's you know, that's misses faces smaller wikis that you've got this huge thing this huge responsibility for something that is seen on a global scale um and there's only a few people dealing with it and i think that that pressure is um, can be quite hard sometimes uh, sadik what are your views around the th thoughts that uh, sarah just now shared yeah um so some of the challenges we faced as um, she rightly mentioned we also have that uh, similar challenges like vandalism and what has re what really worked for us over the past few months was uh, we created a quality assessment uh, procedure which allows us to categorize articles based on their quality so from a to b in our own way and we all came together to agree that um these um, would be our guidelines to support us uh, improve the content or the quality of articles on wikipedia yeah we do have people like um, putting in trash and currently we have just uh, four admin myself uh, Mohammed sadat and some few other colleagues from northern region and we've been paying attention a lot on the list of articles that have been created and we try to like you know moderate the uh, content that they uh, put in the We've we have a dedicated personality who like go through all the articles. Currently, we have over four thousand four hundred and forty-five plus articles on the incubator, and we have somebody who always go through to check to see whether there are recent changes. We have a, a page that you can see who made the most recent changes, so you can always follow up to like you know check what the person has written whether it meets the um, wikipedia guidelines and stuff like that then we also have um, what we call article of the week this has helped us in so many ways every uh, week um, the community come together to select one article where all of us will come together and call it uh, contribute to that article until it reaches maybe like a class article so every week we pick article of the week and we all come together to work on it together instead of allowing people to. So it, it, one way it helped was um, it, it has helped us to be able to like improve the quality on each article that we have uh, created on the incubator, not just adding more article, but we always look at quality. We feel like um, we should have, even if it's not much, since we are still in the incubator, we have more rooms for improvement. We don't really look at how many articles we have, but we are looking at the quality that we have on the incubator. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, but still we are having challenges with um, um, people who want to edit Wikipedia, but they don't have the basic digital skills. That one, that's one of the biggest challenges I've faced um, working with the Daban Wikipedia community. People around here are less privileged. You, people are even in maybe university or senior high school, but they still don't have the basic digital skills because uh, they haven't been exposed to computers and even uh, editing on mobile phones and stuff like that. And yeah, of course, all the people here um, in the community, they uh, mostly edit on their mobile phones. Most of them don't have computers. Sometimes it becomes a little bit challenging for them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I actually wanted to come back to the two points that Sadiq and Sarah made. One was about the safety of the community and the other one was burnout. So how does this work for a small community which has a few members? Is the is it going to be safe by default or do you have to work to make it safe? And the volume of the work 
is it proportional to the rate of burnout or are there other factors that come in like so many activities are going on in the dhwani wikipedia you have article of the week you have quality control you have other mechanisms and scots wiki has seen so much of interest over a period of time so how does this work uh, do you have to do something extra to hold on to volunteers to ensure their safety and to keep their spirits high what are some of those innovative things that you're doing i i think actually from the point of view of of safety and and the in terms of how welcoming a community is um the off wiki spaces that we've seen particularly discord um have been really helpful because they allow for a communication that feels more informal than say on wiki talk pages and and I'm not entirely sure why that is but it it just is um and so I can see within that that there is a great deal of peer support and people helping out and people feeling um confident to say do you know what this is this is getting a lot right now or hey I've got a load of energy right now brilliant let's go on and do this or saying oh this 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 particular thing has been really challenging um being able to uh, just kind of message people and do do the on wiki things that you would do thanking people welcoming people in not biting newcomers <laughs> being supportive to help make that and that's about long term development in how that wiki can grow and to get people to come back and feel confident and comfortable in coming back um so i think that's that's really helpful and those those off wiki spaces i think have been really useful for allowing people to have a conversation that maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable having on wiki and that's for me that's 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 massive uh, sadik your thoughts around this yeah so um you know i think the one thing that has really been um that has helped us to you know navigate through all these challenges uh the commitment we have a lot of people who are very committed to the cause they believe that uh, we are doing something for ourselves so they are always ready to support and then we um as i said because of the um, procedures we have laid down sometimes we, we get uh, overwhelmed with task we have a very small community but um very dedicated of course and i'm really proud of them uh, for what we have achieved so far uh, as we speak now uh, we have um, the daban wikipedia um, subdomain i think we will be having our own wikipedia very soon our application to be approved as the language wikipedia um, should be like we should have a final um, approval uh, in the next couple of days so yeah it's been challenging in terms of like how to control uh, these um, little, little challenges with regards to vandalism and the kind of people quantity uh, uh, quality that we have how to um, assess them and um, we always as i mentioned we have people who support in diverse ways so it's a little bit um, flexible for me as a, a community leader Hmm. True. Uh, whether be it a small project or a big project, community members are your biggest assets, and you always work closely in developing these projects. Uh, Sadiq, I want to come back to a point that you made about the importance of digital literacy, digital skills. So, the, my question is: digital skills are evolving very fast. How does the evolution of digital skills affect the growth of a Wikimedia project, and particularly a small project? Is it because people get connected on discord on telegram that the project sees a spike is it because people are now able to type in a particular font uh, people have access to i don't know you know cheaper internet what are some of those factors that push for the growth of a smaller project so already we have um, so many challenges um, in this part of Ghana um, as i mentioned there's low level of uh, digital literacy in the um, northern region where most of the speakers or contributors are based some of them um, yeah we also have challenges with uh, the platform support like um, keep language keyboard we have um, dagbani keyboard for android but we don't have um, a keyboard that supports um, uh, iphone users so that is still a challenge for us um, also in terms of um, um the you know aside the tools they don't have the skills so there are two things they have they don't have the skills 
to be able to edit. They have the knowledge of the language. They understand the grammar very well, but how to um, understand the Wikipedia ways, like how to edit on Wikipedia projects is still a challenge, which we've been doing a lot of um, online meetups. We have regular um, weekly uh, check-in. We do record short videos on different topics like how to add a reference we do a show. we understand that most of them also have challenges with internet that is a huge um, challenge for us here in the northern region and aside it being expensive we don't even have access to this uh, internet regularly so we do record short videos to avoid uh, they then pay more for internet uh, charges so just a minute or two uh, video to tell to show them how to like add a reference or how to, how to add a category or how to make a link on the Wikipedia or incubator. So when you go through our social media, um, our YouTube channel, you see a lot of videos that we have recorded. These are some of the things that we do to help them right. navigate through these challenges. Thank you, Sadiq. Uh, Sarah, if I may, I wanted to ask the same question, but in a slightly different context. You might not have problems with internet, but an emerging community is an emerging community. You would have your own set of problems. So how do you work with an institution? How do you work with already existing narratives of knowledge? What happens when an emerging project tries to take up these challenges of knowledge production, of pedagogy, you know, and work with it? How does it happen? Carefully. Is the short answer. Um, one of the, well, the things actually I was really interested in what Sadiq was saying about the different dialects that you're working with. Um, in Scots, as I said, we have we have these four main dialects, ten sub dialects, um, some of which, uh, so Doric, uh, which is spoken in the northeast, um, particularly the northeast of Scotland, is uh, is quite far away from uh, some of the other uh, some of the other dialects. So in Doric, fit, 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 fit is a sentence and it's just it, almost the same word uh, five times and it means uh, which foot fits which foot so if you're talking about a shoe for example um so there are things like that which are and that's there is all still scots um and but some of it is very very different and i think one of the one of the challenges that i see coming in scots is this um this issue of dialectical diversity um, and I think uh, you can kind of see this a little bit on the o the only um, uh, contempt uh, cogent thing that I can see on English Wikipedia is where you have an article that says this has been written in American English or this has been written in British English. Um, and I think preserving dialectical diversity is incredibly important. I would not want to see a situation in which we said we only use this type of Scots or we will only use this and it becomes um exclusionary to other dialects i think that is that's potentially um very damaging for the language as a whole um but that is an incredible challenge when you're looking at something where you have lots of different people and um, like how do you how do you do that how do you approach on a wiki to say okay well this is in doric or um this is in uh, central scots this is in border scots how do you do that when and uh, agree consensus on how that can work um, so in terms of um, different partners to come in, it's important, it's especially been really important for me to understand um, the different uh, issues which are pertinent to the community um, and the different language communities and understand that that community is not one community, that there are many communities um, and have respect for the, the, the dialectical diversity and the diversity of those communities. Um, with Scots, because a lot of the Scots texts that we have, there, there are fewer modern Scots texts than there are ancient medieval texts. So you will, uh, sorry, ancient uh, um, Scots texts. So you will get um, perhaps um, archaic spellings. Um, you'll get archaic spellings that, that some people will maybe go, oh, I want to take an archaic spelling because it looks more Scottish. It looks more Scots, but that archaic word might not actually be in circulation in modern Scots. Um, and with something like Wikipedia that has the visibility of Wikipedia, if you end up with a consensus on Wikipedia to say, oh, yeah, this is this is what we do now. To what extent is that a natural evolution of the language? And to what extent is that actually bringing in something that that, that doesn't that, that isn't reflected in, in the way that modern Scots is spoken? Um, so I come back to my short answer of carefully, 
uh, yeah. because there is the potential um, to to establish a, a, a mono language culture that's the right term where there doesn't necessarily need to be one so this this aspect for me of, of dialectical diversity is something that i've been thinking about a lot um uh, and uh. with that i think it's a case of ensuring that if you're partnering with people um that uh, to understand where they're coming from and um, to have respect for the issues that are pertinent to the language community and to ensure that we don't steamroll it over people i think that's yeah. yeah. I, I think both of you made very valid points regarding the challenges and regarding the dialectical diversity. Um, I, I would like to make a conversation come towards a fruition in this. Uh, we have spoken a lot about challenges. We have spoken a lot about uh, difficulties that our projects and our communities face. Uh, can we take a moment to talk about why it's cool to work with a smaller community uh, and say, what are some of those, uh, how do I say this, those uh, uh, silver linings or those wonderful moments where you want to say that, oh my God, this is happening. What are some of those experiences? I'll leave it open, whoever wants to go first. I've just finished speaking, so I'll let Sadiq go first if you have a... Okay, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we worked with students and mostly uh, teachers who are like one of the strongest pillar of our pillars of our community. And I think in future, we even envision like working with them uh, or getting them more involved where, uh, for example, colleges in Northern Ghana can um, adapt Wikipedia Dagbani because this uh, language is taught in school from um, primary school to the highest level, if I may say. So we want them to adapt Dagbani language as a, a, a teaching um, tool or use the Wikipedia, Dagbani Wikipedia as a teaching tool to help students contribute more um, to the Dagban Wikipedia and uh, maybe earn um, some marks for their courses. That is what we hope to do in future, um, if possible. But, you know, as I said, they are already helping us in so many ways. And some of the challenges I failed to mention was um, during the time of the translation of the most commonly used messages on MediaWiki, uh, with support from Amir, um, we were able to do this um, in I think one month and one of the challenges we had was um, creating terminologies for Dagbani um, example we don't know what um, a file is called in Dagbani we don't know upload in Dagbani we don't know download username all these things uh, really taught me a lot of lessons and I discovered that we have uh, so many things that we can actually do to help our language to not maybe go instinct in future. Um, if we can have these things created on Wikipedia or use them uh, anywhere on the internet, I think it will be very useful for future generations as uh, we are always uh, going digital every day in and day out. And how did we come by these words? Because we're working with students, they learned some of these things. And so we were able to you know, discuss among ourselves and choosing the words. So if, for example, we want to create a word for like a file, some of them mention like Lahbal Kwelebu in Dagbani, someone will say Lahbal Panjau. These are things that uh, were used in like several years ago, like 400 years back by our great grandfathers that we don't even know. So through the deliberation and discussions, we're able to really figure out how this can be termed on Wikipedia or in English, the English version of that in our own language. So those were a little challenging, but interesting. At the end of the day, we're able to come out with a consensus on all these um, language uh, terms or terminologies. And I'm so happy that we have such things now on Wikipedia. When you go to the Dagban Wikipedia and you switch to Dagban, you'll be able to see the interface look looking nicely and everything mm -hmm. that you need to like know about um, these terminologies that we never even thought of sometimes um, when i ask for example what should we give for something like um, media or media wiki some of them think about media in a different way some of them even though they know what media is they don't understand how they would like how we should use it in, in right. Wikipedia. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, I think so it's very interesting how problems of the past are now talking to the technologies of the future, and we are trying to bring something, uh, you know, in action. Uh, thanks, yeah. thanks, Adik. Uh, Sarah, um, I think the sort of the, the silver linings, the the things that I have seen that have been wonderful about working with the Scots community has been the confidence and pride that mm. comes from when you work with a user or when you see somebody edit and um, when they. Uh, publish an article or write an article, finish something that they've written in their own language and they see that up there and to to watch people that we've worked with for, for a few months become so much more confident in their written Scots, but so much more confident in themselves and the pride that they have in themselves hmm. and in their language and to be able to see that reflected. Um, and that is something that, I mean, I see it in other, in other wiki projects as well, but it's it's very, particularly here because I think of the the, the, the the status of Scots that not everybody in Scotland recognizes it you still get people can still some people will still see it as not a real language but the pride that you can develop in people to be able to write in their own language and see that reflected is incredible. Yeah, on that note I want to put this hypothetical question 10 years from now where do you want Scots? How do you imagine that Scots Wikipedia would be? Where do you imagine that the Bani Wikipedia would be, Sadek, and the other Wikimedia projects? <laughs> I want to see a, a press story about Scots Wikipedia that's not about Reddit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to see. I'd like to see a bigger community. Um, I'd like to see. Um, yeah, I'd like to see them uh, as get over this, this, you know, have dug in for the long term, have gotten past this uh, uh, firefighting and we are getting there now, like we are definitely getting there. Um, there's still this like, oh, we still got a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, I want to see a press story about Scots. That's a good news story. <laughs> Sarah, no press is bad press. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, I mean, even from, even, from all saying, of this, yes. even from all of this negative press attention that we've that we had, what did come from that is that there is a resurgence of interest in it, and it has brought yeah. more people. So, so the yeah, I, I, been I so would, much more active and so much more. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, we've been able to we've been able to tell some sort of people about it. So at least, yeah, I'll always I'll take the benefits and everything, man. So, <laughs> people might know Sorry. that there is spots Wikipedia, even if they're they're not sure. About it, so. Thank you, Sadik. <laughs> Ten years from now all of the Dagbani projects, Wikimedia projects? Um, so 10 years from now, um, I hope to see Dagbani Wikipedia being among the top 10 uh, biggest Wikipedia in Africa. And we hope to see more um, other Wikimedia projects supporting like tools that supports Dagbani Wikipedia. The Wikidata is really helping us a lot because um, Recently, we started Lex, uh, we could creating Wikidata lexemes in Dagbani. Interesting. So <laughs> I think we were one of the first communities in Africa to start doing something on lexemes. That was um, really uh, inspiring. And we just getting to know that Wikidata support Dagbani as a language, or we can describe Wikidata items, labels uh, in Dagbani. Is, uh, it was really amazing. And some of them are already using it. So we hope to see more. Ten years from now, we want to see more um, to supporting the brand Wikipedia, just like any other wiki in the community. And also we want to see uh, the, the brand Wikipedia working with the Ghana Education Service to support the, those who learn the brand and how best we can improve the language on the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sadek, for this wonderful conversation. And I apologize for being late. I just want to say this. If I would have been early, I would have said it as an opening remark, but I would want to end it with this. I believe that the smaller Wikimedia projects are the future of a Wikimedia movement, not because the big projects no longer are useful or don't have utility. They do. They are extremely helpful, useful, and have a high utility quotient. But the interesting experiments, the many different ways in which a project can evolve, can be explored in a smaller project. Project. And that's the reason why there needs to be far more attention, far more interest, and far more support that should be given to smaller Wikimedia projects. And Sarah and Sadek, you're doing an excellent job of proving to our communities how important these are. So please keep up the good work. And thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Thanks to uh, the team at Arctic Knot for giving us this opportunity, putting this panel together. And I'll hand it over to Richard. Thanks very much. 
Thank you, everyone, uh, for a really interesting discussion. There have been lots of comments in the chat uh, while you've been talking about this.